development in India has led to dramatic lifestyle changes. Not all of them for the better. Lifestyles have become more sedentary and dependence on fast food has increased significantly. Setting ground for India to witness a heart disease epidemic. A healthy human heart beats approximately 1 lakh times a day and pumps about 5 quarts of blood each minute or 284 litres every hour. So the heart is a muscle pump. It's almost the size of a fist and it beats at 80 per minute, receiving blood, oxygenated blood from the lungs and pushing it out to the rest of the body. So the heart has essentially four chambers, the atria and the ventricles. The one on the right side, the right atria and the right ventricle, between those two chambers is a tricuspid valve. And on the left side, between the atri left atrium and the left ventricle is a mitral valve. So normally what happens is the blood is pumped out to the body from the heart, mainly through the left ventricle, which is a big pump for the heart. The left is ejected into the iota, there is a valve called the aortic valve. to allow blood to flow in and out of the heart's chambers, making the flow of blood throughout the body possible. Any disruption in this normal flow makes it difficult for the heart to effectively pump the blood. When the heart contracts, the blood can't go backwards. It should only go forwards and that's because of these valves. So these are one-way valves which allow the blood to go. From the left side of the heart, as the blood goes to the rest of the body, to our brain, is the main valve called the aortic valve. And this is the valve we're talking about. The connection between the pumping chamber of the heart and the rest of the body. Aortic valve stenosis usually occurs after 70 years of age. As valves age, calcium builds up around the valve tissues and these deposits can contribute to valve diseases by limiting the blood flow through the heart and by making the valve leaflets more brittle. Most important symptoms of this aortic stenosis or narrowing of the aortic valve at whatever age it occurs is firstly breathlessness on exertion so a person is unable to do his daily activities which is used to because he gets breathless features of dizziness chakkarana which may suddenly go into a complete loss of consciousness for symptoms of chest discomfort on walking pressure on walking inability to walk the full distance and occasionally or in rare cases, it also presents a sudden death. Aortic stenosis is often has a long latent period where they are totally asymptomatic. So most often, these patients go for a, 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 a go to a doctor for some other reason, and they they detect the aortic stenosis by examination, and they do an echocardiography, and they confirm the diagnosis. The options of treatment for patients with severe aortic stenosis is either medical therapy, aortic valve intervention, which is surgical, or transcatheter. When they are asymptomatic and have severe aortic stenosis, we generally follow up with medical therapy. Once they become symptomatic and they have severe aortic stenosis, then they should either undergo a surgical aortic valve replacement or a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. Transcatheter aortic valve replacement, also called a STAVA, is meant for aortic valve replacement. In this catheter-based procedure, a physician makes a small incision, usually through an entry point in the leg and guides the new valve into position to replace the failing aortic valve. The device then expands into place and takes over the original valve's function to enable oxygen-rich blood to flow efficiently out of the heart. For those who have in moderate to increased or severe risk at aortic valve replacement, TAVR is the alternative. TAVR is not the alternative for routine young patients having aortic valve replacement. Aortic valve replacement surgically is a very robust and tested out procedure. 
But when the risks of the procedure rise is when TAVR comes. Post-procedure, uh, we will have to make sure these patients are gradually mobilized, they're kept in the ICU for one day, and then we take out all these tubes in one day slowly. we monitoring invasive tubes are removed, and we start mobilizing them slowly. And since it's done through the groin, we can only mobilize the next day. So next day, they keep slowly moving, and very often a third day, we discharge them. And post-discharge, we generally follow up after a month, and then after a three months, and then six monthly interval. So we, the easy way to monitor is by clinical examination and by echocardiogram. Echocardiogram is a method where we can clearly evaluate the valve. TAVR is far less invasive than an open heart surgery. The medical professionals have to undergo extensive training to execute this procedure successfully. The steady improvement of the patient outcomes has allowed continuous expansion of this field. We invested almost billions of dollars in developing the next generation technologies. We also invested a lot in our uh, clinical evidence portfolio. Since it's a new therapy, we really needed to show that therapy is not only safety, uh, safe, but is also efficacious. So we developed and um, we um, then ran quite a few um, randomized clinical trials in multiple geography, into, including US, including Europe. And the third thing I would say where Medtronic spent a lot of our energy and investment is um, in partnership with our physicians. Uh, this is not a, um, it's a very complex therapy and it requires a lot of uh, preparation. It also requires close partnership with our own professionals from Medtronic side in the cath lab with our physicians. So we invested a lot in making sure that our customers, our physicians are well trained um, and also our own people, our Medtronic professionals, they're also very well trained in order to achieve the proper outcomes for our patients. 82-year-old Ori was a successful businessman and living life to the fullest before he got infected with a mosquito-borne viral disease. The diagnostic tests not only helped in treating Ori's viral infection, but also detected a larger medical concern at the right time. I got this infection of uh, chikungunya and I was admitted to the hospital. They take my EPO. They, in the EPO, they told me that uh, uh, I have got this, uh, uh, one of my valve, the size has been reduced, so it, it has to be taken care of. Despite living an active lifestyle, Ori began to suffer from shortness of breath and hence went for a consultation with a cardiologist. With subsequent tests later, Ori was diagnosed with acute aortic stenosis. Ori is an 82-year-old man, quite active in fact, I must say he's a very young 82. But he started experiencing shortness of breath which was really getting bad to the extent that he now could not walk at all and was breathless and even on walking. For that, the investigations were done and the most common investigation is an echocardiogram of the heart. So the, when the echocardiogram of the heart was done, it revealed that one of his valves was severely blocked, uh, a condition called calcific aortic stenosis. Calcific aortic stenosis is a disease which happens as an aging process in the body to some of the, some of the people. And the main valve which connects the heart to the rest of the body and is responsible for letting the blood th flow through to the rest of the body, brain, etc., was actually so narrowed that the heart was pumping very hard against, but the valve was not opening. So the blood was not flowing to the rest of the body. It was getting congested and he was feeling breathless. And actually such a condition becomes a very serious condition for the elderly. was advised to undergo the procedure of transcatheter aortic valve replacement to treat his heart valve disease. Before the procedure, you see, I was scared. I was worried how this procedure will get. There were so many uh, see, bad thoughts will come into my mind. <laughs> huh? So I was worried like, like that. We must remember that this decision of offering Mr. Ori TAVR procedure was not a my my uh, advice or, or an individual's advice, 
it's the heart team which sits together and decides for the patient that if he's going, is he going to be really high risk for surgery? Is he suitable for surgery? Should we consider the other way, which is a transcatheter way to implant the aortic valve and which would be the safest and the best procedure, giving Mr. Ori the longest term results? It's been a few months since the procedure and the TAVA technology is restoring Ori's heart valve back to its natural state. Ori is back to doing his regular chores and this time it's a notch better than before. He is literally matching his son's pace while walking. After the open heart surgery, there, are, there may be a lot of complications. There can be, uh, he, he would have taken more, more than six months to recover. But after the tavern, he was, he was back to life within a week. He is now started going to office. It's been practically three and a half months and I can feel the change. He's back to his walks in the morning. He's not breathless anymore. He started going to the office and uh, I think uh, he should be fine. Another three months, he, he should be recovered fully. Ori's procedure went absolutely fine. Well, he, was, he did very well. Uh, he actually recovered rapidly. We had a small cut down through which we put the catheters up. That healed up very nicely. And he was back to normally functioning, I'd say three to four days. He recovered fine and then got back to his complete fitness and activities to the extent that he now walks uh, four kilometers a day and is looking forward to every activity, including travels and, and all his fascinating uh, intentions of doing very many things in his life. An entrepreneur at heart, Ori is not only back to working with more enthusiasm and vigor, but is also breathing new life into all his business projects. Santana Krishnan had been facing difficulty in breathing for a few months, but he discovered just in time the real reason that was lurking beneath the surface. Watch his story after the break.